Hey guys, hiding in a bush for a month got very boring very fast. Luckily, I think most people have kind of lost interest in genocide recently, so I can move on like nothing ever happened. Well, today we're taking a look at everyone's favourite underwater anchor using Skylander. So, Anchors Away Gilgort was released in Swap Force as a series. Wait, no, Thump Back. Because he thumps you with his back? I don't know. When you think of big creatures, whales probably pop up somewhere in your brain. So, there's this game called Skylander's Giants with a new team of huge characters. Yeah, I think I can see their thinking process in this one. I have to say, this is a pretty cool design for a whale Skylander, and it's actually quite scientifically accurate. <clears throat> you know, apart from the limbs. He's got barnacle armour, similar to how barnacles attach onto whales in real life. Of course, he's got the blowhole, a well-known feature of the whale, and a lovely set of teeth to top it off. Wait, wait what? Teeth? Well, back to hell for you, Satan. Is it, is it dead? Now I know what most of you are wondering. Why does Thumpback have eight fingers but only six toes? Oh, you were wondering about his backstory, oh. Many years ago, Thumpback was a member of the Phantom Tide, an evil crew of pirates. Turns out Thumpback didn't even care about the pirate stuff and was just tagging along so he could fish. Okay. One day, fueled by his passion for fishing, he tried to catch the Leviathan Cloud Crab, but it was so strong that it pulled Thumpback overboard. The crab began swimming away, but refusing to let go, Thumpback was took with it, and he never saw his crew again. Eventually, the crab got away and Thumpback was lost, I assume. Oh yeah, and then he joins the Skylanders to battle the Archeans. That's a totally logical next step. Now, I've read some pretty stupid backstories in my time, but this... It's beyond anything I've ever seen in my life. Did the crab getting away make him realise he had to fight evil? And why did he completely drop fishing to become a Skylander? I thought that was his passion. You know what, no. I'm overthinking this. Just... Let's get onto the moveset. Thumpback's first attack is stupidly good. He swings his anchor in an arch direction which is not only very long ranged, but also covers a ton of area. As a giant, being able to distance yourself from enemies but still deal tons of damage without ever being vulnerable is pretty great. When using this attack right next to an enemy, Thumpback does short swings, dealing the same damage but swinging much faster. This can be slightly annoying when there's enemies close to you and away from you, since Thumpback will probably only hit the ones that are close to him, but it doesn't really happen that often. If you keep mashing the attack button, you can continue to swing to your heart's content, but if you're feeling risky, you can perform his free hit combo. If you hold on the button on the third swing, you spin around like crazy, damaging anything around you. Only issue is that you have much less control over your movement during the spin, and it's not as long range as the regular attack. This puts you in a vulnerable position, but the damage more than makes up for that. Genuinely, if this spin attack could damage the same target multiple times, I could probably call this the best primary move of any Skylander. But even without that, it's definitely still up there. So you're probably wondering how on earth you can follow up from such a great move. Belly. Flop. Thumpback performs a huge belly slide, damaging and knocking back anything in his path. And when I say knocking back, I mean knocking back. This sends enemies flying, making it a great way to escape from crowds of enemies. And while the startup is a bit slow, it is very good for movement. Moving on to the upgrades, we immediately get our hands on the third attack, which is a bite. Okay, now they're pushing it. My expectations weren't too high for this attack, but it's actually quite good. Ignoring combos, it's the strongest of the three attacks and has great knockback as well. Overall, pretty solid. This is pretty slow stuff though, so use it with caution. The rest of Thumpback's upgrades are extremely basic. There's one that makes the belly slide last for longer and do more damage, one that buffs the chomp, and one that buffs the primary attack. If it weren't for his base moveset being so damn fun, this would be very lacklustre. You got lucky, Thumpback. You got lucky. Of course, he can redeem himself of the upgrade paths. The top one is for the anchor, and the bottom one is for the chomp and the belly slide. The first upgrade for the anchor's a yay path gives us two new combo moves. The power swing combo is a tough one. It's like a stronger regular swing, but it's not as strong as the spinning combo. But it does have more range. So which combo is better? Hard to say. The power swing is meant to work as a strong but safe attack, which can't really be said for the spinning combo. 
but I simply never found myself using this move, even in situations where it would have been much more effective. The Whirlpool Ripper is pretty useful though. Thumbback slams his anchor on the ground, creating a Whirlpool that pulls in and damages nearby enemies. This is great for grouping enemies up for maximum anchor damage. Sadly this is a very slow attack and aiming it can be tricky, so it can lead to a lot of punishment, but if you get it right, the payoff is huge. And the middle upgrade just boosts that payoff even more with extra damage. Strangely, only for the Whirlpool Ripper though. Huh. It's almost like they knew that nobody would use the power swing. And finally we have another power increase, making the primary attack more dangerous than ever. Screw guns! Start robbing banks with anchors, they give you more money, trust me. First up for the up close and personal path, is this. This is a goofy move. Just look at him, incredible. Thumbback now has the ability to chomp while belly sliding, but to be honest there's not much to talk about. You can only get 2 chomps in per belly slide, but it's extra damage and knockback which I can't really say no to. Hmm? What's that? Oh, you want a critique and full analysis of the upgrade? Get lost, I'm not your slave. The middle upgrade? Gives you swag, finally! It also makes enemy attacks do less damage, but come on. I think we all know what the highlight of this upgrade is. This is actually a very nice addition, since when you're as astronomically swole as Thumpback, you'll be taking a lot of hits. So this makes belly flopping a lot less risky. Hmm. Don't know why, but I get the feeling this is on the bottom path for a reason. And now, for the final upgrade of the bottom path. Huh. I don't know how else to say this, but if you hold the chomp attack, Thumpback can now vomit water. Now I like vomiting water just as much as the next guy, but I just can't find a reason to use this move. Not only is this traumatising to watch, but it's straight up not even good. The primary attack has longer range and does far more damage, so what purpose does this serve? And whilst it is significantly better in the older games, to be honest it's still not very useful there either. Just, just, just gross. Well after thoroughly looking at both paths, it's time to pick which one's better. The thing is, all three of Thumpback's attacks are already great moves, so this isn't a Gilgrim situation. No matter which path you take, each move will still have usage, and saying this, the bottom path really doesn't give you much. It's got a pretty decent upgrade, an okay one, and this. While the top path on the other hand improves the anchor by a landslide. Or a sea slide, I guess. <laughs> you can take the bottom path if you really want to, or if you just like not following my advice. But just know that you'll be missing out on an absolute powerhouse if you do. Anchor Supremacy. All we have to look at now is the Soul Gem. Now while sliding, Thumpback has the ability to burst water out of his hole. They just couldn't help themselves. This deals damage and knocks back anything nearby. I'm getting some serious deja vu here. I still don't know what purpose the starfish serves here, but hey, I'm sure there's something. Some people might be wondering what I have to say about using the primary attack at the same time as the secondary attack, but fortunately you don't have to press both buttons at the same time for this move. Believe me, crisis averted. This soul gem actually makes the bottom path even worse, because now the belly slide chomp upgrade has basically no usage, since this soul gem basically does the same thing but better. So there you go, pick anchor path now. And so the age old question returns. Is Thumpback good? He is more than good. He is a god. Thumpback is easily my favourite giant for many reasons. His moveset is perfect for a massive creature and it's also really fun. Although I do feel like it's important to address that I don't love his upgrades at all. Don't get me wrong, his actual moves are fantastic, but if we're looking at the upgrades, Jesus H Christ, this is a boring Skylander. Because of this, he gets a well balanced 8.5 out of 10. Very solid pick and definitely give him some attention if you haven't already. So I can't drown you, huh? Probably can't kill you in the other way, because you're Satan. Uh, can Satan die? Holy water? I don't know. Look, here's five pounds. Just take it. Take it. I think I might have to move country. Uh, Italy, Spain, Papua New Guinea!